Hey guys, I hope everybody's doing amazing. Welcome back to my channel, Thrive with Stride. I hope you guys are doing good. Oh my gosh. So guys, what has been going on? Um, guys, our, our Prince Willie, Willie of, from Willieville, <laughs> Prince Willie of Willieville, and Pegerton sometimes. <laughs> Anyways, guys, listen. Apparently, Willie is in Poland um, for some reason. <laughs> I don't know if the Polish people asked for this guy to come there, but he's there. Um, supposedly, he is... Um, it says here, Prince, Prince of Wales visits British and Polish troops near Ukraine border. Uh, yeah, so he's, he's there. Um... I, I can never figure out why these people do these trips. I, like, I have no idea what, what, what he's doing or, or why, but he's there. Um, but, the, but one thing I did find out today is apparently he's been pandering, pandering to the LGBTQ plus community over in Poland. He was at um, an... He was at a, a bar, a queer bar, right? Um, and all I see right over that is uh, pandering right now because nobody can make me believe that Willie cares anything about anybody but himself. So there you go. So Willie's, Willie's doing the pander dance today. He's pandering. Uh, yeah, that's all I see. That's all I can see here. I, I, I can't say anything else because all he does is use people for his own reasons or his own benefits and i think that's exactly what he's doing right now yeah but uh yeah so anyways so enough talk about willie we, you know we're done talking about willie but that's what he's doing today and we continue guys to get story after story after story about will or will not um well <laughs> Will Harry or will Harry and Meghan not go to the coronation, the abomination, the abomination coronation? That's what I call it. Will they or won't they? That's the long and short of the story. That's all you see um, whenever you want to find out anything that's going on with Harry and Meghan. Yeah, it's will they or won't they? Will they or won't they? And oh, are the kids going to be included in the coronation, in the abomination coronation? guys will they be included will the um f well their oldest child will be turning four years old on that day may 6th the day that that um that guy um king charles III. that's the day he chose to do his abomination coronation and his grandson will be turning four on that day right what a way to try to upstage your grandchild but anyways trying but feeling <laughs> because i believe that that day will be once again a day that the squad does its thing when it celebrates you know little archie's birthday <laughs> and it's usually a day when um there's some sort of fundraising done and all that and yeah, I, I just know that that day is going to be, it's going to be all about, you know, Archie and his birthday. But anyways, <laughs> so they're saying, um, will or will they not, the kids, be included in the coronation? Because of course we know that um, Camila, Camila has all her um, kids and grandkids all involved in the, um, the coronation, the, the abomination coronation. And everybody's wondering, what about, what about, um, what about, um, Harry and Meghan's kids? What about Lillian and Archie? What about them? Are they, in, are they included? Are they even invited? <laughs> you know, you know, when there's nothing to talk about, guys, people will find everything to talk about. And I, talking about that, I also heard about this group that, um, that is trying to, uh, get, um, um, Harry to not get his, um, his visa or like, or something. What is that about? What is that about? They're trying to say that he, he can lose his, um, 
his visa, his American visa, because he admitted to um, smoking um, pot. <laughs> that is the silliest thing that I've heard. And, <laughs> and then, you know what? I also saw this earlier, guys. Um, you know, one of the people who hate Harry and Meghan, mostly Meghan, um, that um, piss moron, piss moron guy. Yeah. So I saw this video of him earlier saying that he also um, did some certain substances and he's one of the people who is like, oh, Harry smoked pot. He should not be allowed to be, you know, to, to get his visa or something or he should lose his his visa or something. And I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Uh, isn't that the craziest thing that now they're saying that Harry should lose his visa or 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 whatever it was that they were saying? It it just sounds so crazy. I did not, guys, I did not research about that, but I heard about it and I thought I'd just mention it quickly here because it doesn't make no sense, but there you go. I I thought I should mention it, but it, it really is so silly. Um you know, it <laughs> And guys, this, this Sky News, this Sky News Australia, guys, have you ever like looked at the headlines that they have? Oh my gosh. I swear it's like if a 10 year old wrote all of their headlines and wrote all of the pieces that they have on Harry and Meghan, because it all sounds like a, like some 10 year old who is having a hissy fit. <laughs> That's what it sounds like to me. Cause look, look, look at this one. All their fault. Prince, Prince Harry and and, and Meghan Markle, or or this and or that. You know, everyone's everyone's terrified. Every you know, it's all their fault. <laughs> it's like I, when you look at the headlines from that Sky News Australia, it's like a ten-year-old wrote them. Anyways, guys, <laughs> beyond that, beyond that point, um, I actually. Didn't get a chance to mention this the other day when I was on, but uh, this is from Archwell and it says, Megan, the Duchess of Sussex, contributes recipe to the World Central Kitchen Cookbook, Feeding Humanity, Feeding Hope. I was happy to see this. Um, it's always good when something good, um, you can report something good that's happening. And uh, it's always, and you never hear about these things um, in the regular <laughs> the regular news but here we go um yeah so it says here um this weekend longtime friend um and partner of the Archbishop foundation chef jose andres announced the upcoming release of the world central kitchen cookbook feeding humanity feeding up the cookbook is a captivating collection of stories and recipes from renowned chefs, local cooks, and friends of the global nonprofit, which feeds communities impacted by natural disasters and humanitarian crisis. All author proceeds will support World Central Kitchen's emergency response efforts, and Megan, the Duchess of Sussex, is, pr is proud to have contributed a recipe. So, the Duchess sent a lemon olive oil cake which is included in the book guys lemon olive oil cake hmm that isn't doesn't that sound interesting i you know i'm gonna have to try that seriously <laughs> so anyways guys alongside the cake she included a letter and this is what it said sometimes we overlook how much it matters to express thanks and and show appreciation Perhaps we realize now more than ever that fundamental human moments like enjoying a meal together fill us up with more than just food, even if that food is delicious. To that point, we hope you enjoyed the offering we baked for you, a small, a small token of thanks from our home to yours. Our hope with this effort is to show that when we all participate, even the smallest actions can have a ripple effect. Even individual actions can impact the whole of us. And yeah, and you know, like it says here, over the past two years, the Art Show Foundation has partnered closely with Royal Central Kitchen in a, in a shared mission to create more compassionate, strong, and healthy communities. Yeah, so guys, I... Don't know if you guys have um, purchased this book, any of you, but 
this yeah it's the world central kitchen cookbook and of course um i'm promoting that for, you know for you guys to take a look at and you know because you know what guys every single day the news about harry and megan are filled with just horror horrible things that people are saying and all this and of course the only channels who do positive um coverage of harry and megan are the Sussex squad channels like you know all of us we are the only ones who highlight all the positive things that they do and so i'm happy whenever i can highlight something positive so yeah i saw this and and this was on the actual website a few days back and i didn't get a chance to talk about it so i just want to highlight that and you know there you go i just want to highlight that something positive here because every time we hear about Harry and Meghan, guys, you know, it is, oh, are they coming? Are they not coming? Are they this? Are they that? You know, it's like all the negativity that they can find to talk about. That's all they talk about. <laughs> and, you know, I also have another um, positive thing to talk about here. Um, let's see here. So it says here now, um, and this is on Hello Magazine. It says here, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's Archwell Foundation outshines, guys, outshines the Obama, the Obama and Clinton foundations in its first year. Archwell goes from strength to strength. Yep. Yeah. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's Archwell Foundation has hit the ground running, outperforming both the Obama and Clinton foundations in their first year. Isn't that amazing? According to data released on the foundation's website, in the first full year of operation, they reported an incredible $13 million in revenue and spent a total of three to, three, um, $3 to $4 million. Um, And it says here also, the Obama, the Obama, what am I, why can't I say the Obama? Like, why am I saying the Obama? Like, I don't know what I'm saying, but the Obama Foundation raised a 5.5 million and spent 1.9 million, while the Clinton Foundation raised 10 million and spent 2.9 million in their first years of operation, according to the re respective foundation's reports. So, guys, can you imagine this? Harry and Meghan are pretty much competing or in the same realm as former presidents. And presidents and their first and the first ladies. Can you imagine this? And of course, we all know that Harry's book is everywhere, and it's and his book is being used as an anchor for all these other struggling royal books that nobody wants to read. His book is now being used as an anchor because his book is like right there, and then you see all the other books around them, around them, around his book. It, isn't that interesting that Harry's book is now the number one book? Um, of course, we all know it's the number one selling nonfiction or the fastest selling nonfiction, nonfiction book in history. So, and uh, now it's just being used as like the book is just everywhere. What, listen, guys, when you see that there's a book that it's it just everywhere, that means that book is incredibly successful incredibly because they can afford to like print like a million other books and have them there in the bookshelf on the bookshelves just for fun because the books will be there and, and you know there might be a person five years from now guys who has never even you know who has never read it who'll be like you know what this book is here maybe it's uh by five years from now it'll be half price or something They'll pick it up and they'll want to read the book. They'll buy it. Maybe they buy it for like twenty dollars, you know, whatever. And it's all on um, um, on the Audible and all those kind of um things. It's on Audible, and I of course I listen to it on Audible. And Harry's voice is on there. There's people who, you know, maybe two years from now, they didn't think about it, but then they're like, you know what? I think I want to read this. I think I want to listen to this uh, this audio book of of Prince Harry Spear. Just to see what, you know, the whole fuss is about. It's, it's incredible. Like, this book is going to be here forever, guys. This is long and short of the story here. It's going to be here forever. And I just find that incredibly interesting. And all. And I saw, um, I was watching something and I saw this guy, um, I think it was on Good Morning Britain. 
I don't know. I, I don't know the, name, the guy, the guy's name, but he's always criticizing Harry and Meghan. That's the long and short of the story. And he was like, oh, um, oh, Spear was he's like trying to say that Spear was a, a big mistake on Harry's part. A big mistake. Um, yeah, it was a million. It was a, a million dollar mistake. Yeah. A book that made a multi million dollar mistake. Right. You're trying to say that it was a mistake and it's the, this book is the one of the most successful, if not the most successful royal book ever. <laughs> How is that a mistake? But anyways, whatever. So it's pretty interesting the way that they like to, to um, frame things, isn't it? But, but back to the, um, the Archwell Foundation and the fact that they are more, well, they're basically, um, I guess they're more, they, they're, in their first year, they were more successful than the Obama um, Foundation or the Clinton Foundation. <laughs> it's, it's just so interesting to me. But it says here, with a passion for making a difference, Harry and Meghan's Foundation has already awarded over $3 million in grants to over 40 organizations, right? These grants focus on key areas like vaccine equity, relief centers, refugee resettlement, and building a better online world. And also talking about that, um, once again, they, um, they are, um, Harry and Meghan, um, oh my gosh, the time, I think it's, is it the time magazine? Um, I think it's the time 100, um, they are also again on that list, the time 100. And I think you have to like, um, visit and go and, um, support and, and, and vote for them to be on there. But uh, I, I think they are again included in that the time 100, um, list and guys don't forget to go over there and vote for them. But yeah, so this is why Harry and Meghan are on these kind of lists, guys. They are competing with um, a former, like former um, presidents here. They're not on the level that, you know, people would like, you know, the British press, for instance, would like you to believe that they're nobodies and they're irrelevant and all that. They are on a path, guys, where they're competing with the Clintons and the Obamas. It's like... This there's no there's no other way to say this right now, but yeah, so that's pretty interesting. But anyways, I just wanted to um, you know, to put out a few things about them that were, um, I would say maybe people didn't know or whatever, and yeah, guys, ah, guys, I appreciate you guys coming through, um. And guys, you know, thank you so much for everything that you do for this channel. I appreciate it so much, guys. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so guys, it's been, it's been a time and I appreciate everything that you guys do for this channel. Um, let me see here. Now, let me thank some of the, I want to thank actually the people who come through all the time on this channel and thanks to all the people who you know who are actually members of the channel i appreciate you guys so much um all of you are amazing and thanks for anybody who have sent any super chats or super stickers to the channel i appreciate it so much you guys are the best and yeah guys Please do remember as well to go over to my new channel, Thrive with Liv P, and just go over and uh, take a look at some of the videos that I have there. I did one about Dorothy Dandridge, um, um, Dorothy Dandridge the other day, and yeah, go take a look at that. And uh, guys, it's been amazing talking to you, and... I will talk to you guys in the next one and have a great one, guys. Bye.